Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. John Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Brian Middleswarth. It is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We have indeed received some of the rain we asked for in this last week. Uh, maybe a little much in some places I was seeing about flooding, uh, particularly up in Marion. Uh, that there was some flash flooding there. At least around here, it has seemed to be a little more like what we wanted, that kind of consistent, steady rain that will soak in. Uh, and it looks like we're in a bit of a more active weather system. It is also now officially summer, although it has felt like that for a while for many of us. But we certainly welcome this time of warmth and growth and pray for continued uh, growth, both in the fields, but also in our gardens. Uh, I continue to uh, enjoy going out front of the church here and seeing what has bloomed this week. Uh, it, it is an ever-changing landscape that I know feeds my soul, hopefully feeds yours as well. It is good that we are gathered together. I invite you to stand for the Thanksgiving for baptism. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Water. Water. We praise you, O God, for water. The Cedar, the Iowa, Hoosier Creek. The rain that nourishes animals and plants, the water for drinking and bathing, we praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories, a flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that can heal leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, washing the disciples' feet on the cross, thirsting for us. We praise you, O God, for this font. For you breathe into this water to wash away our sin and birth us anew into your peace and joy. We praise you, O God, for water. O oh God, you are the ocean, the source of all life. O oh God, you are the river saving us from death. O oh God, you are the stream restoring our community's strength. We praise you, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen and amen. amen. Let us sing.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we employ you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The first reading is from Lamentations, chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. We will now read Psalm 30 responsively. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead you restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. I invite you to stand as we sing our greeting to the gospel. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, 
Her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see this crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated. Each week in our prayers, you hear a list of people. These are the ones who we have been asked to hold in prayer, P prayers for healing from sickness, prayers for wholeness in mind or spirit, or for bodies that are just wearing out, prayers for safekeeping. And you may do a similar thing in your prayer life. I have a practice of, in the morning, sitting down and actually writing out my prayer list, naming those people or places that are especially in need of God's healing, God's love, God's mercy. And in that way, we are like Jairus, coming to God on behalf of another. Not necessarily a beloved daughter, perhaps a parent, a friend, someone in our community, even a stranger who story we read on Facebook or the news or we heard about through a conversation. Now this kind of prayer is called intercessory prayer. Literally, where you place yourself between a person and God, you intercede between the two. It's the equivalent of seeing someone going down in a crowd, running over to them and yelling for help, calling attention to their plight. And it's a kind of prayer that we can all do, a way of loving our neighbor regardless of who they are or where they are. And it's a practice that benefits the one whom we pray for, but also can benefit ourselves, and not just because it makes us mindful of others. Suzanne Anderson, who lives in Colorado, shared in her blog that the act of sharing a prayer concern about her mother, who lived in Florida and had fallen and fractured her hip, she really didn't know any more than that, that sharing that prayer petition was not only an asking for the help of her congregation in prayer for someone else, but also an asking for prayer for herself. And in doing that, she realized why God encourages us to meet 
as communities and to pray for one another, to share our burdens and our choices so that it's never too much for one person to bear. And it's why I wish more people would be open to that kind of prayer, to sharing their need for their own prayers, but also the prayers of those whom they love. It's a gift, not only for the one prayed for, but to those who surround them as well. Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, a well-educated, influential man of prominence, bears his pain, anguish, and desperation, not just to Jesus, but to this crowd pressing in upon him. All the things that had defined him up to that moment are pushed aside for the one who matters most, his beloved daughter. And Jesus responds. Surrounded by the crowd, this cacophony of cries for his attention to heal, to touch, to teach, Jesus responds to the man's request and his trust. If you but lay your hands on her, Jairus says, she will be delivered out of danger, pulled back from the precipice of death upon which she teeters, and she will live. And then as Jesus moves through the throng, he encounters another woman in need. She's like many who come to Jesus along the way. A remarkable woman in her own right. Despite 12 years of suffering from a flow of blood, despite making herself financially destitute, spending all she had on health care that didn't work, but rather caused her more suffering, despite all of this, she pursues healing persistently. She did her research. She heard about Jesus, convinced that if she but touched his clothes, she would be made well. And so this woman of suffering fought through the crowd to get to Jesus, just as Jairus did. She reached out. She touched the fringe of his cloak, the merest thing attached to Jesus, and the healing power came out of him like a zap of static electricity. An exchange that both she and Jesus felt and she was healed. These are the ones who come to Jesus on their own. This is us. Asking for what we need in our prayers, for that job, for peace, for understanding, for reconciliation, for healing, for help on that test. Pursuing Jesus as our hope. And even though the exchange is fleeting, the crowd is great pressing in upon him, Jesus wants the relationship. Who touched me? And then she, too, throws herself at Jesus' feet and confesses what happened. And Jesus confirms what the active ingredient was in her healing. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And then we return to the story that brought us here, a child on the precipice of death, and the word no one wants to hear, she's dead. But Jesus hears the understanding of the world, it's too late, and tells Jairus, do not fear, only believe. Do not let fear gain a foothold, but only believe. Trust in what brought you to me in the first place. Jesus hurries to that place, brushes 
past the ones who cannot believe that Jesus can restore this child, comes into where she lay, takes her by the hand, and calls her to arise. And she does. Jesus calls her from death into life. Now, the author of Mark ties these two women together, not just with this story within a story, but also verbally. Both are called daughter. The child is 12, just coming into her majority. The persistent woman has suffered for 12 years. And they are also tied by what their afflictions have done. They've threatened community, family, relationship, faith. They've destroyed or put at risk their social lives, threatened all that makes life worth living. For the woman, her flow of blood would have prevented her from attending to her religious obligations according to Jewish law. It would have forced her to keep away from people, as even contact with her would have done the same to them, forced her away from the support of family and friends, kept her from her faith, all comfort of community stripped away. And for the child and her family, her sickness threatens the ultimate rupture of relationship through her death, something that affects not only her, but all in her family, and certainly through her father, the whole community. And in their encounter with Christ, they but find both healing and restoration. Through their faith in the faith of those around them, they find life. Life fuller and more abundant. Life in relationship with others, reconciled to them. And so friends, if you are in need of this kind of healing, if you know someone who is, it is yours. Because we know this about Jesus from this story and so many others. His desire to heal. His desire to restore. His desire to bring to life, but also to know you. To be in relationship with you. Why? Well, that's what his daddy does. From the beginning, God's desire is to be in relationship with us. God's beloved creation, God's desire is life for us, for all of us. A life fuller and more abundant with God than whatever we can try to put together on our own. And this life, this relationship happens in many ways, but certainly through the gift of prayer conversation with God, both speaking and listening. It comes through the gift of Scripture. The story of God's pursuit of God's people, a means by which the Holy Spirit can blow into your life. And it comes through our own actions and words, the embodiment of this desire of God for healing for all people for restoration of relationship, for the growth of that first gift of the Holy Spirit, love. Unbounded, overwhelming love. And so I invite you this day to come to another visible sign of the love God has for us in the world. Come to the table and receive the very body and blood of Christ, a meal given for the forgiveness of sins, for the mending of broken souls, for reconciliation both with God and for one another. 
for being made whole, for healing. I still carry in my memory the image of a woman from my home church coming up for communion, St. Mark's Lutheran in Charlotte, North Carolina, every time she came, just beaming. I carry in my memory countless conversations with believers who have talked about their own encounters with this meal with Christ present here, where they have felt in their bodies its healing work. A physical change that melts worries away, where attitudes were changed, where barriers were broken, where things were finally let go. And they had life, fuller and more abundant. So come to this meal. Come to Jesus in prayer and supplication, either for yourself, as the woman did, or for others, as Jairus did. Come and experience for yourself that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. That God's mercies never come to an end. Come and experience that God in Christ really is the healer of our every ill. Come. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day.
gathered together in Christ, let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Travel alongside all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel, that through the good news they proclaim all might experience transformation. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion. Stir them to pursue peace and cooperation and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that all would have enough. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. We pray especially for Amy, April, David, Denny, Michael, Stephanie, Mike, Marcine, Lee, Mark, David, Marius, Benny, Florence, Michael, Pearl, Butch, Bill, Dan, Hunter, Tammy, Rachel, Morris, Marv, Lenora, Judd, Lillian, and Marvin, as well as those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Now let us share that peace with one another as we are comfortable doing, and then I will invite you to be seated. Thanks to all those uh, for their offering of time today, especially uh, Karen Middleswarth, who is on AV, Rose Dunham for her reading, Joyce and Jesse for ushering today. A number of opportunities coming up uh, for uh, offering of self. Fourth uh, of July, uh, we'll be providing a hospitality tent for those who are waiting for the uh, Firefighters Breakfast, the 50th annual, uh, if that's something where you can spare some time to just kind of come host, mostly what that means is you let folks know what's available there and you say hi. Uh, it's an opportun it, it is an opportunity to visit, basically. Uh, please uh, let me know if there's some time that you might be able to do that, or even the other thing is, if you happen to be downtown, just stop on by and you can give a break if needed for anybody who's there. Uh, also, 4th of July, we're participating in the parade for our Vacation Bible School. If you would be interested in participating in that, we could use a few more candy throwers and or walkers. Again, let me know. You can uh, email or call the office. Uh, Vacation Bible School itself, end of the month, 19th through the 23rd, in the evenings between 6 and 8.15. Uh, we could use some help, uh, particularly with... Uh, Adults who will be present with groups of kids. The teaching will be light, mostly your presence, a consistent presence throughout the week. Even if you can give us a night, that would be wonderful. Again, 
you can let me know. And then finally, those positions that I made uh, mention of today for worship, we could use a hand. Uh, ushers, uh, readers, or uh, a little bit heavier load is AV. If that's something that you're able to do, uh, there's hard copies of signups outside, but you also uh, can uh, click on and sign up online through any of the links on our webpage uh, or in the e-news. All of these things that you offer of yourselves, but also the financial resources you offer to us help make the mission and ministry of St. John possible, and we thank you for that. I invite you to stand as we give thanks to God for all of these things that have first been given to us. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. When the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together now the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I invite you to be seated. A few words uh, about uh, our coming to the meal. You'll be dismissed by the ushers and come forward. We'll do this, uh, I still am at the point where we'll do this uh, kind of like we have throughout uh, our, the last 18 months. I'll invite you to come forward to the table. I'll set the bread out for you on uh, the plate. There are cups available for you to take, wine in the outer ring, grape juice in the inner ring. And we'll ask that you just maintain a little distance between family units as you come forward. When you come, you can remove your masks uh, as you eat and receive. The empty cups will just go into the white container to the side. The meal is ready.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Anybody else have a moment of... <gasps> That's the problem with having big, long, droopy... <sighs> but we got fed, and that's the good, the important thing. A couple of quick reminders. Uh, because of uh, the 50th annual Fireman's Firefighters Breakfast next week, that will last all morning and uh, overtake our town, uh, worship is going to be online only. That worship will be pre-recorded and actually available by Saturday evening, and so I uh, would invite you to partake of that uh, through uh, Facebook, through our webpage, through our YouTube channel, uh, and then in and around your worship through that, we do invite you to go support uh, our volunteer firefighters. Um, again, uh, Vacation Bible School, just a reminder, registration is open if you want to have somebody participate, and many hands make light work, so we invite you into that as well. I invite you to receive this blessing, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. And we sing. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.